is an internal customer as important as your external customer? Uh, and can they make specifications for your processes? Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today we will be talking about internal customers, specifications, KPIs, expectations, th things like process standards a bit as well. And this all came out of a couple of discussions and they were more around you know, the specifications, tolerances, how SPC affects that. And the discussion sort of went into what is a specification or a KPI? And then questions got mixed in with, we've got this um, you know, management KPI, should I consider them as internal customers? And at some point I thought, no, it is time to make a video on more of the concept of internal customers and how they have to do with it, especially specifications. And who is, who is not an internal customer? So when we are talking about processes, and about the products that they make. An important part there is the specifications. But the specifications are about the product. So we're not talking about process specifications. We have got settings, we have got performance indicators. The specification talks about what the product should look like, feel like, how safe it should be, how high it should be, how heavy, all kinds of things like that, right? It is, it is a quality parameter of your product. Now, not everything about your product has to really be in a specification, but you know, most physical characteristics will be. Some will just allow so large tolerances that you don't even write them down, right? So, for instance, this uh, milk powder has to be white. It often is even put into customer specifications, but inside the factory, nobody talks about it because, come on, if it's not burned, it will be white. So, is it a spec? Maybe yes, maybe no. The ones we are really concerned about are those that we sometimes miss. So, those that make it, let's say, difficult to produce a good product. Those are the specifications we mostly worry about. Does it need to have a specific moisture percentage? Does it need to have a minimum tension strength that you know, or it doesn't break under so much pressure or it has to be a very specific color gradient, things like that. Now, what will happen is that when some other company wants a product that we make, so let's say that we make nice gear wheels, they put that in all kinds of machinery, they will tell us we want that gear wheel to be 53 millimeters in diameter plus or minus half a millimeter. Now we've got specifications, right? We've got the ideal diameter. We've even got a bit of tolerance around it because they also understand that we will not make it always exactly the same. So they will tell us this is the bandwidth you have to produce. Now some other customer might say, well, it's the 53 plus or minus 0.1 millimeter because they really want a very stable product. So you might think oh, it's the same specifications, both a 53 millimeter gear wheel, but that second customer allows for much less variation in your process. So that is also part of the specification. What is the nominal value, but also what is that bit of tolerance over and under the nominal value in that specification? Now, when we are talking about KPIs, I mean, the width of that gear wheel is not a KPI. A KPI could be, for instance, what percentage of those gears did we have to scrap because they were too big or too small, right? So specifications decide that, oh, that gear that we just made, it's too big, it's out of spec, we will scrap it. And the percentage of scrap might be a KPI. Now, why is this a key performance indicator because it costs money to scrap things. You put in the material, you put in the work, you put in the machine time, and you wasted it. So many companies will check the percentage of waste. Many companies will also check the speed of the machine. So does that make cycle time? Maybe a specification or only a KPI? Well, this is a bit of a tricky one. 
when we look at cycle time just to see you know how fast is our machine going and are we up to the speed that we think this machine should be able to do we're talking performance right so key performance indicator kpi of course we can in certain processes also say look to get a good gluing or a good pressure or a correct baking time versus temperature the time that the product is in the process so the time that pressure is applied the time that heat is applied that is critical to quality it doesn't make it a specification the specification is what is the gluing strength at the end so how much force can we pull it with before it rips apart or in create in case of the bread in the oven is it still nice and fluffy or did we burn it right so if we should have put it in the oven for 20 minutes but we had a bit of a breakdown or just a slow running machine it was in there for 35 and it's now nice and black on top the 35 minute cycle time is not the specification part it is that the bread is black is out of spec or that it's way too easy to rip off this glue part it's out of spec cycle time in these cases is a process input so it's a setting right so we have a lot of standards that we know will create the best product we can for the best performance so it and, and let me sort of rephrase that many companies will go not per se for the best product they can make they will go for the product that still falls within specifications for the lowest cost and effort so specifications they define your limits that's why they have tolerance limits they, they define what you are still allowed to do and then the more efficiently you can make that that increases kpis now when we talk about internal customers um, let's first talk about a customer this here factory who had the specification for us uh, well uh, we need that 53 plus or minus half a millimeter that is a customer and they put specs in place but what if this is actually just another factory within our bigger organization they have suddenly become an internal customer so when we have this especially when you know organizations sort of buy up their own suppliers or the down the line type of machinery and then factories and they just invest into the depth of their supply chain what will often happen is that they will be formally the same company but they still really you know work as independent factories and will, there will really be no difference between customer internal customer because that factory down the line will just say no we're not going to accept a batch send it back but if you have a more integrated group you can still sort of have this but the the, the way of working together becomes much more combined you may you may even have the same management team running both of these plants and they just you know decide that okay it's out of specs but we can still work with it if we do a bit of adjusting of the tools over there so they might even accept it does that make them less important customers no right now today it may hurt a bit less for this factory but this still really hurts your total production effectiveness so these are specifications right 53 millimeters plus or minus half a millimeter whether they come from internal or external customers doesn't really matter now if we have the case of you know the, the one big factory but in this factory we have a number of departments we have their own different production manager and the sort of buffers in between and they sort of work like little factories within the bigger factory now we have the same concept right <clears throat> the only thing is that probably it's the same set of engineers that designed the whole product and the whole production line and they put in place a number of specifications that are needed in each phase of the process and this you will see a lot right many factories they will have a two three seven step process first you grind up your raw material then you mix it then you heat it and dry it then you mold it into a plastic uh, type of product and that is formed stuff like that right 
each of those steps it creates a product and that is basically every step so every work in progress type of semi finished product will have specifications and you should define them and this is you can say it's an internal customer that that is more of the of the warehouse people uh, they get pretty ticked off with you because again there is no barcode on it or you don't have you know stuff identifying all of the products or it just comes in one go and things like that important as well treat them as customers for your service level generally if you have this side of setup it doesn't feel like an internal customer the next process down the line but they are even though it's the same engineer who put all those specs in place but think about what your real specifications are and here it is important we're not talking about you know keep it as centered as you can so wish we're talking about what are the tolerance limits between which we do not have to adjust the next step of our process you can get more noodly than that but that is that is the easiest way i have found out to think about strong internal specifications what are the settings well not the settings what are the product characteristics that will allow us to send that product down the line without making adjustments over there those are your specs now you can of course have two level specs with this is still you know we need to tell them <clears throat> because they need to change their machine settings to process this and then the wider specs were ah, scrap it immediately because we simply cannot use it anymore they have a sort of a double spec definitely with internal customers internal specifications this is very possible you might want to consider that even for external specs but definitely internal but when you do not define at all what are your limits then you're just gonna produce whatever what i see more often though is that your process engineers or your quality engineers they put their wish list into the internal specs so they say when you go over 30 53.1 millimeter you need to report blocking it or you need to call your supervisor or whatever but we know that the next step in the process could have handled 53.5 and each time that an operator stops everything they get in the supervisor the supervisor calls the quality team uh, look we've got uh, 53.4 here and the quality team will say mm, yeah that's not good bad operator but you can send the product down the line we're not talking about specs we are talking about process control limits different topic let's also do more videos on that but make sure that the spec you put internally are really what can go to the next step in the process without having to change anything there and the critical uh, specifications they will be what cannot even be corrected anymore so just scrap it right away now what brought this discussion more to my attention was about my manager saying that we need to produce this product for under five euros per unit it's also a specification right when it's over five euros per unit i cannot sell it normally in the market well it it's not really a spec isn't it it is a constraint for your business for sure when you are designing products and processes around it to make it you will definitely have these discussions right your sales and marketing teams they will say well look guys if this product is gonna cost more than five euros to produce we're, we're not going to have a good market for it so it, it needs to be about four and a half so that it can fit in the range of our other products and when then the, the new product designers come up with a recipe and a way of making it in the factory that makes clear that this will cost something like six or seven euros per, per piece to make the commercial team will just say okay let's let's not make it it's a sort of design specs but when the processes are running how much it actually cost it's a performance indicator it's, it's not a spec so if you make a product that happened to cost six euros to make you're not going to scrap it you're not going to throw it away and those are the specs right preferably physical but characteristics of the product that will make you say well if it doesn't comply with this throw it out or at least sell it to some other market that'll probably pay less for it for instance if you have organic food 
and you manage to get a couple of non-organic ingredients in there, you have a problem in your organization if you did, but it still is still a good food product. It's just really not organic. So we cannot sell it in the organic market anymore. Is this good enough to sell as our regular product? Well, no, it has a different taste. Okay, let's sell it to some you know, off-channel market batch or maybe for rework to some other company. Those are always the deal with out of spec, but it went, it went out of spec. So in this case, it's not a physical characteristic of your product that it has an organic ingredient, but it is a, an ingredient specification, right? It, it really is something belonging to the product. If the price of your raw material just shot up and now it is over your expected budgeted price per unit, it's not a specification. Those are manager wishes. Those are performance indicators. Cycle speed, we discussed, usually the same. So all of that, that is about the process. But the process efficiency or the process performance, those are not specs. Your manager is also not an internal customer. They might demand a lot from you, they're not internal customers. The next process down the manufacturing line, those are internal customers. You might even say that the finance department for some reporting is an internal customer. Uh, you already see that I don't really like sort of diluting the internal customer term for these support departments. I think maybe the other way around. Right? It, when the finance department in their team meeting say, hey, fellas, the production department, they are our internal customers. We should help them. We should deliver service to them. Fine. Right? That is a, a customer of business processes, of service. But when we're talking the manufacturing chain, really, the internal customers are the next steps in the manufacturing process. Not the managers, not the support departments, not anyone sort of outside of what you are making. Keep that term clear. Um, but we will say the warehouse people, for instance, they might also demand that there is a good identification sticker on the right of the pallet, or that goods are always positioned in a specific way because it makes it much easier to take them out. These, yes, are also internal customer demands. You know that some specifications are a little bit about the process of delivering your product, right? how your product is placed or how it is stacked on a pallet or how it is identified, things like that. So they are on the border of being a product characteristic, those still count. But your manager, your HR department, your maintenance department, they are not internal customers. Don't confuse your operators too much with these business and service processes that also happen within your factory. That is something, keep it to the support departments. Focus on what is needed. If the product is perfectly fine, then it is within specifications as well. Don't make it your wish list. If the next process needs to change their inputs or so their machine settings and stuff like that already because of what you deliver to them, almost certainly you were out of specs. Except in a couple of cases where you know that your process has so much variation that you simply cannot and you just deliver the best info to the downstream process that you can so that they adjust. But when they need to go outside of their normal operating instructions, your product was out of specs. When you just need to scrap everything, you were way out of specs. Those are specs, not cycle time, not cost, not flow rate through your plant, no, products. Now, I hope you liked that explanation. I hope also that it made it a bit clearer when you can talk about internal customers and their specifications. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and also discuss things you know, in the comments. This video also came out of a discussion in the comments and actually it bounced off. It, it, it did not come from a video about specifications or internal customers. It just was a nice organic discussion. I also hope that when you see other people comment and you have something to add to that, please do. Please do react to each other's comments. It makes the learning so much better for everyone. For now, I wish you the best of luck satisfying your internal customers. And as always, don't forget to enjoy the continuous improvement journey.